it's 12 morning for me, but it's technically afternoon. I just woke up from my 12 hour shift and I only got to sleep for four to five hours because I'm going to get a halter monitor put on me today. And this was the earliest and the only time they could get me in. So I'm going there before I work tonight. And so I thought I'd bring you guys along with me on my day. So if you haven't seen my last week in the life video, I have to get my heart monitored and yeah, we're gonna just go see what that is. I've never had that done before and we're gonna go get it. And Babe's here. Hello, babe. <laughs> he woke me up, he's gonna drive me because I'm like really tired. And uh, we're gonna go see what it's all about. I, I also am eating my breakfast and he so graciously, thank you, babe, made me a toast with some eggs. Thank you. <laughs> and we're gonna head on over. It's next to my work, so it's really close by. I just don't know how long it's gonna take, so we'll see if I have to go straight to work right after. And I'm just gonna also take you along through the day with me. So let's go. <laughs> Gotta wear this for 48 hours. Let's see how this goes. All right, you guys made it home with my little halter here. Halter, 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 halter. <laughs> There's Bruno. Hi, Bruno. Show your eyes, bro. Can't see him. Hi. And Brownie. Brownie, what's up? So, what I gotta do now is take all my stuff and charge the battery because the battery only lasts for 24 hours and they want me to be monitored for 48 hours. So we're gonna charge this thing. What? <laughs> I've got my directions. This is what the leads look like on my chest. Got one on my chest, one right here, the epigastric region, and right here on the side. Is that a picture of your body? No, this is not what my body. <laughs> cool if it was my body. <laughs> Nice chest, nice abs. All right, we got extra um, electrode lead thingies and these, some wipes to wipe my skin. And this is the charger. Charged. <laughs> All right, let's go take a nap. <laughs> I can't take a nap, I gotta cook Not food. you, but me. Let's go take a nap, bro. <laughs> Bruno. Why are you looking at me like that? Bruno. Hey. What's up, dude? <laughs> so they've just meal prepped lunch for me. Let's see, it looks like chicken and salad. Pretzels and dip. Uh, I saw on TikTok, it's like a egg sushi roll. Egg sushi roll. Want Yum. some chips and uh, pickle? No, this is too much food. I'll take it. Thank you. What about Diana? <laughs> oh, she can help me eat this too. Okay. And yogurt? Yum. Can you make you a sauce Thank for this you. little dough? Yay! <laughs> Got my monitor. Alright. Ready to go to work. Let's go. To work we go. <laughs> Let's see how many people will notice this thing. <laughs> First thing I want to address though is thank you and shout out to the man who kept my wallet safe because after my cardiologist holter appointment earlier, I left my wallet sitting on top of a bench. And when I left, I didn't even realize that I didn't have it until maybe like 10, 15 minutes later. So I, we had to turn around and drive back to go get it. I was like freaking out in my head, like, oh my gosh, my wallet, everything is in there. 
and uh, I pull up, you know, bass was pushing really hard on the gas and I was running in there and I, sure enough it wasn't there, but then like a truck pulled in behind me and as I was walking out the door, he had my wallet in his hand and he was like, I saw you earlier at the doctor's office and I knew this was your wallet so I held on to it and we were waiting for you to return to come back and get it. And I was like, oh my gosh, what a great human being. He was in the doctor's office, I remember him because he was sitting across from me in the lobby waiting area. But yeah, that is just so amazing. I was freaking out because the hospital is not in a really good area and I'm like, dude, people are just gonna pick up my wallet and take it, but I'm just so thankful that he grabbed my wallet and he was so sweet and I was like, thank you, thank you so much. And then his son was in the truck and I was just like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. You know, just just wanted to say, you guys, there's there's some great human beings out there. He didn't have to pick it up and hold it and wait for me, and he did. Ah, oh, but they, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my. I just wanted to say, public service announcement: turn things in to lost and found, or just kind of do the do the right thing, because I would totally do the right thing. So yeah, that was amazing. That was that was great. I was just like, huh, he saved the day. Okay, now let's get to work. <laughs> You guys, the waiting room is packed, like standing room only, people in wheelchairs everywhere, all the chairs are full. If you walk in here, you pretty much have to stand at this point. And patients I've scanned said they've been talking to other patients who have been waiting out there in the waiting room for hours, 15 hours, some two days. I just don't understand. It's just crazy. And the ER is so busy, the hospital is busy. I work in a huge hospital and it's still really busy very short staff it's crazy yeah this is this is insane if you guys follow me on instagram i'm pretty much talking about it on there and i just want people to know the truth about the hospitals because you see it on the news you see it and you hear about it but you don't actually i don't know live through it unless you're working in it or you're a patient in it and i feel so bad for all the patients in the hallways or in the waiting rooms and and they need help and they they can't get the help as fast as they need it because we're also struggling behind the scenes. Nurses are really tired, burnt out. They're also sick themselves and there's not enough nurses, not enough doctors. People are out. It's just crazy. But yeah, hopefully it gets better soon. Catching up with the staff, pretty much almost done, and the time has been flying. It's now 1.40 a.m. I just finished a pediatric exam and an LND 35-weeker. I did also her kidneys because she's having back pain, and so we do kidneys. But I've been like washing my hands and using hand sanitizer a lot, but I'm getting these like dark red spots, and they're super itchy and bumpy and so i brought cortisone and uh hopefully that helped bring it down but it's just been because you know we wash our hands a lot and hand sanitize a lot and we got to make sure we're putting on lotion but sometimes like in the winter time especially my hand gets really dry and then it burns so ugh. if you guys have any other remedies i would love some tips for dry skin and itchy itchy skin and red skin <laughs> but yeah so gonna go to lunch soon it's my friday so we're almost done i'm gonna be doing some studying and my accounting and finance class this week and so i'm definitely excited to finally have some time off but you know it's been a crazy few days here on my graveyard shifts it's been so crazy and it's been a really really crazy struggle with how busy it's been but i'll talk about that more a little bit later 
As for now, I'm gonna keep on going. I know I'm running on four hours of sleep and I'm like so tired, but also it being really busy has helped a lot. So we still have around about four more hours left and I still have to take a lunch soon. So we're gonna get through the shift and we'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Oh no, you guys, it's raining outside. <laughs> It's cold. Well, it's the end of my shift. I'm so tired. And I scanned a whole bunch of patients today. I scanned pediatrics, abdomens, pelvics, adults, pregnant women, labor and delivery. I scanned a bunch of carotids, venuses, pelvics. I said pelvics already. I'm so tired. But yeah, uh, this. Holter, honestly, no one mentioned anything about it, so they all probably thought I was like pregnant or something, I'm sure, because my shirt was like really big, but no one mentioned it, and it got, I forgot it was there, but towards the end, it got kind of itchy, or like was poking me a little bit, so then I was like, oh crap, I kept forgetting that it was there, because I was like itching it a little bit, but it wasn't too bad, and now I'm going to go home and sleep, wake up, and then go to the gym tonight. I'm gonna go to Orange Theory because the doctor told me he wants me to do some cardio and to see what my heart is like when I'm working out because that's when I feel it the most elevated. So we're gonna do that tonight when I wake up later. And the rest of my days off, I'm gonna just study, go through school, my master's degree program, and just enjoy the week off. You guys, it has been a really crazy weekend and super busy in the hospital. The census is so high. We work in a huge hospital, very, very big patient load. And we get at least 40 patients like continually on our schedule, just coming and going nonstop. There's, there's never a time where we have an empty list of ultrasound. We always have patients to scan whether it be stats or routines. And it's just super busy. And it's unfortunately like a huge struggle. One of the struggles as a sonographer is that in the hospital especially, we wear scrubs, of course, and patients in the hallways left and right, patients in the waiting room, patients in the lab area. Anywhere you walk, anywhere you go, everyone's gonna think you're a nurse. And they're gonna say, hey nurse, and yell at you and say you're a nurse. And they're gonna say, hey, I need something. Or, hey, can I get water? Can I get food? Can I get a blanket? Can I get socks? Hey, my IV hurts. Hey, I need pain medicine. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> and it's just honestly something you're gonna have to deal with as a sonographer. I understand all healthcare workers are in this kind of position as well, because like transporters get asked this all the time. I'm sure phlebotomy techs, I'm sure CAT scan, nuclear medicine, x-ray, I feel like everyone, anyone that walks by, even registration I saw the other day was asked for something and they couldn't give these patients what they were asking for. So that's going to just kind of be part of the career, especially if you work in a hospital setting. And so I wanted to just like bring up something that I, I posted on Instagram, which was what we do as healthcare workers, not just sonographers, but healthcare workers. And we owe it to these patients to help them to the best of our abilities, even if they're not our direct patient that we're scanning. If there's a patient in the hallway, they flag me down. I'm not going to just ignore them. I'm going to ask them, hi, I'm not, I'm going to tell them, hi, I'm not a nurse, but what can I help you with? What, what can I try to help you with? You know, and a lot of the times they just want some kind of something little and you just kind of relate to them. I will ask your nurse for you or I'll ask the doctor for you if the doctor's nearby or I'll, I'll try to find the nurse. I'll try to get you the help that you need. But right now it's been so overwhelmingly busy and short staff that it's been so difficult to even help these patients. And the example I can give you is that I was returning a patient to the waiting room after I did her scan. And three patients over in this area where we keep them medicated had flagged me down. One needed to be discharged and asked for a discharge packet. One needed an oxygen tank because she ran out of oxygen. And the guy next to her that needed to be discharged had her connected to his oxygen. So thank goodness for him, sweet angel, connected her to his oxygen because she was running, her oxygen tank was empty. And then the person in the wheelchair in front of them 
their IV was like backed up, blood going all the way through the IV. And obviously I'm not a nurse, but I can sit there and, and try to do something to the best of my ability because I am a healthcare worker. In my scope of practice, there are certain things we can and cannot do, but there are things like if a patient asks for socks, I can give them socks. If they want a gown, if they need a towel, if they're able to have water, I will ask the nurse first, hey, can this patient have water? I'll go get it for them. You know, no big deal. If I'm not busy, if I'm not in a rush, anything like that. Um, but the, I just before I walked past these these patients, I saw the register, the registrar people. They had asked, and they were asking for just basically an oxygen tank. And so I was like, here, let me get you an oxygen tank. Door right next door has full oxygen tanks. Just got one and thoop, connected her. And that simple little act of hey let me get that for you she was so happy and and you know she felt better i just feel so bad because i don't know how long she was sitting there without oxygen but you know her next door neighbor patient friend gave her oxygen so thank goodness for him but then like unfortunately for his discharge papers i had to tell him like i'm sorry sir i i'm not able to do that for you i'm not a nurse i can't but i will try to find a nurse over here to help you with that it's not a sonographer's duty which is what i said in my posts on Instagram, it's not our duty to do certain things like put IVs in, give them medications, and to to answer a lot of their questions or or basically do things what nurses and doctors and other people do. But it is our healthcare worker responsibility to be able to help these patients. Just because they're not your patient directly doesn't mean you can't help them in one simple or small way. And I, I, I do that. I enjoy doing that. If, if someone needs a blanket, okay, I'll get them a blanket. And so this is just uh, something that you guys will probably experience, especially if you work in a hospital. And I'll post the post right here that I said. And yeah, that was a, that and my other little, you know, COVID post got really, it, it got around i had over twelve thousand views on that i think that's like some of the most views i've ever had and it was about the truth in the hospitals it is truly really busy right now you hear it on the news another story another number things like that uh nursing and staff shortage it truly is a crisis and not just in my hospital but everywhere every hospital is dealing with this everyone's getting sick and everyone just needs to kind of understand I mean, I see it on both sides. I see it on the patient's side that's getting upset with us inside the hospital. And then I see the healthcare worker side where they're getting upset and burnt out and getting upset. And everyone's just upset, you know? It's, it's an upsetting environment and it's really unfortunate. But in order to get through all of this, you have to remember what we're doing, why we're here, and just hopefully believe that this too shall pass like this is a crazy time and we all just kind of have to get through it i mean we've been going through this pandemic for two years and it's just now kind of going through the healthcare workers extremely bad extremely bad so i don't know this is just my rant <laughs> but i'm gonna end the video here and i'll hopefully do some more videos in the future about the results of my holter monitor and take you guys along with me in the future if you guys are interested so yeah definitely you guys stay safe out there stay positive put yourself first put your self-care at the most top priority so that you can take care of other people because you have to take care of your sir you you have to take care of your bleh. <laughs> me trying to be motivational right now you have to take care of yourself first in order to take care of others and i promise you if you enjoy what you do if you if you like helping others then it'll be worthwhile all of your schooling will be worth it all of the hard days of studying will be worth it at the end of the day so yeah oh my gosh this was nine minutes long <laughs> i appreciate you guys so much if you're still here please comment down below let me know what you think let me know what you want to see in the future and we'll see you guys in the next one all right guys be kind to one another stay safe bye